Hey guys, welcome to another home lab video here today. It has been a while since I last posted a home lab video, so I'm excited to show you guys um, a few of the things that I'm, uh, I've, I found and, and have implemented in my home lab um, in the last few months um, in the course of the uh, next few videos. So um, in today's video, we'll be showing you Zerobyte, which is a actually amazing backup a tool that I've been using recently since I've seen it on the self-hosted uh, subreddit. Um, and honestly, I, I love it. It's It's been amazing. So I wanted to kind of share what kind of um, setup you can do with it um, and use it for. So essentially, Zerobyte is kind of a backup solution with a GUI um, for using Restic on the back end. So I actually did make a video back, you know, probably like a year and a half ago, um, how you can use Restic to set up backups, which was great except for the fact that you really can't, you know, it's it's all terminal based. You kind of don't have progress bars. You kind of can't really see things in a user interface, right? So you had to kind of do a lot of like, you know, cron jobs and set things up on your own. So this kind of fills in that gap um, and it's really user friendly. So I'm looking forward to showing you guys how this is all set up. So um, as you can see, I have their GitHub on my page right now. Um, there is a Docker with a Docker Compose file. So what we want to do is actually utilize that because that's always going to be the easiest to kind of get anything set up. So what I'll want to do, and I have a VM set up right now, is actually install Docker. So um, because I'm using a Oracle Linux Eight box, I will actually download and set up with their Docker, their Docker, download docker.com rel um, repository. So what I'll want to do here is add that repository. So yum config manager add repo and then paste the repository. So this will add the Docker community edition repository here, which will then allow me to essentially install Docker. So now I can install the Docker community edition. And this will essentially install Docker, which will also allow me to do Docker Compose stuff too as well. Um, and it's pretty fast. There really isn't too much to it. As you can see, there's like 15 things to it. Um, but as that installs, I'm going to go back here so that we can kind of talk a little bit more about this. So you can kind of see here, we got a installation guide. There really isn't too much to it. Um, so this will just create an image based off of zero byte with the version um, 0.19. Um, there is sys admin privileges here, so that's that's something to note in case you um, are doing like mounts and whatnot that you need to do. Um, as well as there is a volume mount here that you can use. Um, we all essentially just create a, another mount point for the local mount. Um, it doesn't have to necessarily be this, but uh, we'll just create another one essentially. But you can see here there's a simplified version with um, no remote mounts, but if you're using remote mounts, you might want to do sysadmin um, capabilities like NFS and whatnot. So, um, so now we have essentially Docker installed on the machine. So we just you know start Docker, um, and then we'll just enable Docker as well, so that you know if I ever reboot the machine, it it works. Um, and then what we here have here is Docker compose .yaml. So we'll actually end up copying this, what they have in their GitHub, pasting that. Yep. Um, and then just updating the few things that um, I'll update. So in here, we'll just mount, we'll create a new directory and we'll just name it data. So it's a little bit easier to do, um, recall. Um, I'm definitely not in Europe, Paris. <laughs> um, I wish, that was actually fun. I did go to Paris back in the day, um, a few years ago with some, uh, some of my relatives and it was a great time. Um, would highly recommend if you haven't visited. Um, and then we got the ports, which will be open on 4096. So, but other than that, there really isn't anything to really configure on here. Um, so we'll just quickly make the data directory just so that it's there. Um, and then we'll just do a Docker compose up hyphen D for detached. And then this will pull the image down um, and start it up. So by default, it will, you know, use on port 4096, but you can also, you know, do TLS with Nginx setup um, and then essentially just have it, you know, port forward to 4096. Um, in this case, I won't do that. Um, I do got a script, an Ansible playbook to do it, but just to show you guys in case you don't have your, you know, SSL stuff set up. So we can now do like a Docker PSA. We can see that it is started up and running on 4096. So we should be able to go to our browser. Um, and because I have DNS set up, I can just type in uh, zero byte dot dragon dot local and then the port 4096. And we will essentially get 
the login page. Um, and by login, I mean it's a sign up page. <laughs> so we'll, you know, create a uh, admin username, um, password, you know, password. And we'll create our admin user. And then here there is a recovery key. So this is like your recovery key that you would use if you were to um, un recover your backup data if you were to you know lose this, but you have like the files, right? Um, so in this case, we will just confirm the password um, and download the recovery key. So this would be your rustic pass here. That is your rustic recovery key for the files that would be backed up essentially. So nothing too fancy. So now you've got the interface. The interface is actually pretty clean and pretty simple. Um, it might take a little bit to just kind of figure some of the stuff out, but for the most part, it really isn't too bad. Um, so we got our volumes. So our volumes is essentially, you know, the storage in which we want to um, select to back up. Because I believe repositories are where you would back it up to. Yep. And then the backup is a schedule. So this, this is where we would want to, you know, you know, data directory in this case, right? Um, so there's a few things that you can pick here. So you can pick, you know, a directory, an NFS, a Samba share, web dev, dev, or a R clone. Um, so in most cases, you'll probably use one of the top three, majority of the time. <laughs> um, in this case, we're gonna demo with directory, but the other ones are pretty self-explanatory too, where you can have an NFS server that will essentially be, you know, whatever NFS you have. I just don't have an NFS still set up on my um, YouTube video um, lab, so we won't do any of that. But if you want to know, you know, see me set this up, let me know in the comments. I might just set one up. Um, so we'll just do directory. So the selector path here um, essentially is the path of the directory of where we want to, you know, save stuff. Um, so in this case, because I made a data directory, right, in here, so there's data, which will be part of the data, um, like your rustic stuff, your your iron mount. Um, but in here, what we'll want is um, we'll, okay, wait, yeah. So I'm in the right directory. So we'll make a directory to like, say like backup data or something, right? Um, so in here, we'll have both data and backup data. So the data is just what um, zero byte created, backup data will be the data that we actually want to back up. Um, so the thing to note is this is a volume mount. So when we did the doc compose, right? So if we were to cut this, we got data to varlib zero byte um, here. So so with the volume mount, everything in data will be mounted to varlib zero byte, which means, and I might have to reload this page. I'll, I'll just reload it. The selected path would be varlib Oh, var, var lib zero byte. And then there should be the backup data directory um, because of how it's mounted essentially. So we all just name this as like backup and we will create that volume. So any, any data that goes into this backup volume um, will be essentially, or backup directory will go, well, can be um, backed up. And then what we'll have here is a repository for where you want to back up location. And there's a few options here. So in most cases, you probably won't put local, right? Um, because if you do local, you're really putting it on the same machine, you back up on the same machine um, as ze where zero bytes running, which probably is in the home lab that you already have, which probably wouldn't really be much of a backup besides, oh, it's there. Um, but depending on your scenario, there's multiple ways to do it. Otherwise you can do S3. There's also the Cloudflare R2, um, Google Cloud Storage, SFTP, which is probably a, a probably simpler solution if you just have servers lying around um, to just do SFTP credentials. Um, but you can also do like R clone and set it up to like a backblaze or something of that sort. So kind of up to grabs for what you want to do. Um, in this case, I'm going to do local, even though I said, obviously it's not a good thing, but for demo purposes, I'm going to just do local. Um, but most likely if you're going to do a, you know, three, two, one backup solution, you probably want to do something like S3 where it's global and not on your home lab. 
Um, but in this case, this is totally fine. Now, or if you're just trying to keep it simple, honestly, um, you can just do like an SFTP that's you know another server or something. Um, so you have two options, or uh, three options for compression. You can do fast, auto, or max, slow, or better compression, depending on what you want. Um, and then what we'll have here, um, host mounts required. So this is also the default path, host mounts, so repositories. Um, it's already mounted and it's safe to use. So this will essentially create the repository directory zero byte repositories. Um, and this is where essentially um, will be part of the container, um, but it's because of a volume mount again. So like in here, it would be like data and then repositories. So like a repository directory will be created um, when this most likely happens. Um, so, but you can, you can change this. Um, but you want to make sure it's mounted. Otherwise, it would just be in the container. And then if it, the container got you know removed that volume, um, then you essentially just lost all your backup data. So here we'll create that as well. OK, so that's pretty quick, nothing. So now we got our source, we got our destination, um, and now we create a backup job, which is actually pretty nice because this is just like creating jobs. There we go. So now we'll select a volume to backup. So the backup volume, um, we'll just name it like my backup. We'll select the backup repository. So that was the repository we created. And then you can set it to whatever interval you want. Um, in most cases, probably daily is a pretty good good thing. You can execution time. Um, so we can do like 1 a.m. I think this goes down. Yep, 1 a.m. Um, and then essentially you could select the paths um, I guess let's make some data first. So let's actually go to backup data, um, touch data.txt, make directory other data, uh, other data, data.txt. Oh. <laughs> okay. So now we have a few, few photos and a few directories. Um, I'm going to have to reload this page to, to actually see those things. Um, my backup daily, let's do one AM, but now you can see how there are, and, and this is the cool part because now you can just click on things that you want to back up. So you can back up like a whole directory. You can back up certain pieces. Um, you can just back up the file or well, in this case, that's the only file in there, but you can back up just this data.txt. Um, without it, and it will automatically do the patterns kind of for you. Um, you can also just do the patterns yourself, so you don't have to do it um, to include or exclude. But this is very user, like it's very nice, right, um, for a user interface. Um, so other than that, you can have retention policies and stuff like that. So like, say for example, you're like, hey, I only need to really keep like one snapshot just in case something goes wrong in, in a day, or I need like 20. So you can, you know, keep it as many as you want. You can keep hourly, daily and whatnot. Um, so there isn't that much to it. So after that, you can just hit create. Um, so that it will run, you know, the next time it has kind of your next backup, but you can also manually just run it. So you can hit backup now. Um, you can see that process. And then what you can see here is in here, and and because of how it is, um, you can see in here that the files are backed up, um, and then you can also restore. Um, I haven't actually tested this, so this will be a fun demo to see if we can restore. So let's let's actually um, real quick uh, vi data.txt as a good example. Um, this is before backup. Um, okay, so I, I updated that file. So so this this file is, is essentially zero bytes right now. There was nothing when I did the backup. So now I can backup again, um, and I might want to do it. But now you can see that the backup is 22 bytes because there's actually contents in this file. Um, so like, if I were to update this file um, and then try to restore backup, so uh, let's let's just do that. So let's update this file .txt. Um, oh. um, this is more stuff. So now this file essentially has, this is more stuff and this is a backup. So you got a few options here. So let's say we want to restore this data.txt. So let's hit the restore over here. Um, and I, I don't know if you can see because of my face, but there's the restore right here. There you go. 
So there's a two places you can do a original location or a custom location. So in this case, let's do the original location. So we'll overwrite. Um, so let's go find that file again. So we got that data.txt, select that original location, um, and then advanced options, nothing really. Let's restore this one item. Okay, so successfully restored zero files, skip zero files. Maybe because I did it wrong? Oh, okay, maybe it was just a bad header, but it actually did restore because now you can see that the first line is removed and the second line's already there. Okay, so most likely I either read it wrong or it just, it was just a bad pop-up. So you can see that the restore works. You can easily pick the restore, um, but you can also restore in a custom location too, where it would pick a different directory. So if you want to keep the newest file that got written and restore the older one to do a like compare diff, you could do that too. So, um, but other than that, that's kind of what this is. And there really isn't too much to it. So you can just set up all the volumes, um, the you know locations for your repositories for destination, um, and then as many backups as you want and as frequent as you want. Um, obviously, the only you know uh, constraint here is disk space because if you don't have enough disk space, you can't really back up to something that has no free space, right? So, um, but other than that, that's pretty much kind of the the intro. Um, you know, obviously there's the other configurations like using an S3 bucket or using NFS. So, um, but if you want to see me, you know, set something up like that, let me know in the comments and, and I'm, I'll, I'll make a video on it. So, but other than that, um, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to making some more. Um, there's some cool other home lab stuff that I, I, I saw. So, um, hopefully, you know, I'll get some, a lot more videos coming up, uh, the next few weeks. So hope you guys all have an amazing new year, um, and a, you know, good start to, to the year. So thanks for watching guys and we'll see you guys later.